G'day, I'm Paul. Now, I've got some good news for you. Hyundai has ditched the naturally aspirated four-cylinder petrol engine in the Santa Fe and instead replaced it with a really hearty V6 petrol engine. And that makes this unintentionally one of the quickest SUVs in this segment. And that's always a good thing. Now, here's another fun fact for you. The steel in this car comes from right here. Well, not literally right here, but Australia, and that is iron ore from Western Australia and coal from Queensland. So there's a little bit of Australiana inside the Santa Fe. This one here is the mid-specification Elite, and it's priced at just under $52,000. If you do want to see the rest of the Santa Fe price range pricing, you can go down to the comments section below. If you do want to jump ahead, there are some time codes there for you to find the part of the review that you specifically want to watch. Or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down to the description and you'll see all the links there. If you are watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and then follow that up with the bell icon. That's going to tell you every single time we publish a new car review. Let's talk styling now. In terms of dimensions, 4,770 millimeters long, which is just under 4.8 meters. It's not as big as something like a CX-9 or a Pathfinder, but it is still fairly big in the grand scheme of things. Have a look at this design. There is a lot going on here. So you have satin chrome, which looks pretty cool. And then you have this split headlight design. I love these LEDs. They're kind of narrowly fitted into there and they really give this an aggressive look. Your headlights are actually in this cluster below here. So you've got your standard beam and then high beam, but halogen, ew. We have spoken about this before, especially here in Australia. If you're driving in the country, you need to be able to see what you're doing. And these halogens are just a bit nasty and don't give you the projection that you need. But I do like this grille. It kind of emphasizes everything that's going on. It's nice and big, but not overly gaudy. I think overall, the design at the front here works really nicely. Now, the curious thing about this car is the weight. This weighs around 1,800 kilos. Because the V6 is only available as a front wheel drive, you're saving around 200 kilos on the diesel, which is only all wheel drive. So there is a distinct weight benefit to going for the V6 petrol instead. So these wheels, they're nice looking wheels, all fairly sort of straightforward. They're 18 inch alloys, and they have quite a chubby profile on them. What are they? They're 60 profile. So this is gonna give you that softer ride, even though the wheels are slightly bigger, it's not going to crash over things, and we'll test that out when we do go for a drive and then come around to the back with me so over there we have our proximity sensor by the way this is the button to get in and out of the car the roof rail in that satin chrome finish up the top you can see this car's fitted with a tow bar which is interesting given it is a front wheel drive car so when we go for a drive i'll discuss that in a little bit more detail but i think overall this is a really nice looking design and they've really finished it off nicely you'll be able to tell it's the v6 because of this the 3.5 badge while Hyundai has gone for a slightly quirky design outside, inside the cabin here, it is all nice and premium. So I love the way they've divided all the black sections with the chrome highlights. And have a look at this roof. It's like a modern couch. They've gone for a really cool design there. But let me know in the comments below, have you bought a Santa Fe? And if so, have you got kids? Because I'm curious to see what this looks like after the kids have had some access to it. You can also get different seat colors as well. So this is the black layout. And for the most part, it actually looks really good. So let's get our hardness tester out. This is the device we use to see how soft touch a soft touch dashboard really is. And this goes from zero to 100, where zero is soft and 100 is hard. So I'm gonna switch it on here. Test it on our dashboard. We'll see what that's like. Oh, that's not bad. 57, it caps out out there. And what about the center armrest? We'll see how that goes. Ah, oh, that's not bad as well. So it does show you that Hyundai is using some soft touch materials around the cabin to make it feel nice and premium. What about build quality? Well, it all feels pretty nice and decent, but I did notice here with the center console lid, it is a little bit flimsy. If you haven't seen it yet, have a look at our Ionic review. You can click up there to watch it. That had a similar issue with the console lid. So it seems like it's a thing that's common to Hyundai's. The other thing I love about this is the seats. Have a look at the diamond quilting up the top there. These seats look like they belong in a high-end Audi, not a Santa Fe. Let's talk infotainment. You get this floating infotainment screen standard on the Elite. This is an eight inch unit. It comes in built with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, if you do want a more detailed look at this infotainment system, click up here to watch our full Hyundai infotainment review. But outside of that, you're getting a 10 speaker stereo, FM, AM and DAB plus digital radio. So they're handy functions to have. It is a little bit disappointing though that the voice recognition button, when you hit that, it does nothing. 
your phone has to be paired in the smartphone mirroring function for it to work. Most other cars have at least basic voice recognition function built into the infotainment system. This doesn't have anything at all, which is a little bit annoying. You get shortcut buttons on the side there, and it's a fairly easy to use system with a super high resolution screen. Okay, what about the rest of the features you're getting in the car? You have dual zone climate control, USB connectivity, you have two ports down the front here, an auxiliary port and a 12 volt outlet as well. If we go further down, you have front and rear parking sensors, a reverse view camera, an electric park brake. You also have the ability to go through drive modes. We'll talk about that later with hill descent control. Then in addition to that, you have radar cruise control, low and high speed autonomous emergency braking, automatic dimming for the rear vision mirror. Ahead of the driver is a small LCD display with the trip computer and also it appears with parking guidance controls. When you are in reverse or approaching an object, you have blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assistant, and of course, rear cross traffic alert as well. Enough about infotainment and features. Let's talk about storage. How much have you got here? There is plenty of places to put odds and ends. So phone storage, you can either slot your phone down there, or if you have a bigger phone, it sits beautifully down there. There's no wireless phone charging, so don't expect that to light up or do anything interesting. Cup holders, plenty of them. Fits cut perfectly. And then inside there as well, you've got those little clips. Inside the doors, you have cup storage and also plenty of storage for other things that are going to be floating around. The center console is fantastic. You've got coin storage in there as well. Over here, glove box. Glove box is fairly decently sized. You also have an air conditioning duct in there as well. So you need to keep chockies and stuff cool. That's where you want to put them. And then finally, a little gripped tray here as well to put coins and other things that you don't want floating around the cabin. So the seats look good, but are they comfortable? Yes, they are. This feels so nice to be seated here. The steering wheel is a really good size. I find something really weird with Hyundai's. The leather they use, or whatever the material is on the steering wheel, it tends to be quite slippery. So when you're holding onto it, it kind of slips out of the hand a little bit. Yeah, I don't know whether you want to treat that with something if you buy the car. I'd hate to imagine if you're turning or something and it slipped out of your hand, it wouldn't be very nice. But outside of that, the seats are really comfy. I could picture myself doing a thousand Ks behind the wheel here. It'd be really a good place to be seated. So how friendly is the Santa Fe in the second row for adults and kids? Well, I can tell you from an adult's point of view, the room here is pretty impressive. So my seat is in my normal driving position and I've got plenty of knee room there. Toe room is slightly compromised, but it's not the end of the world. Mat pockets in the back of these two seats. Storage here for bits and pieces, plus rear air vents as well. But I love this, two USB outlets so you can keep all the kids' devices charged. In the center, we have a center armrest with two cup holders, which is a handy feature to have. Now, because it's a three row car, these two seats are movable to give your rear occupants more leg room. And there's another fun function here. There are buttons on the side of this seat that allow it to move backwards and forwards to give you more leg room. I don't know how useful that is, especially if you've got kids, because I reckon they're gonna be playing with that a lot of the time, but it's there nevertheless. You have window blinds as well to block out all the nasties outside. There's also isofix points for the two outboard seats and top tether points for the entire second row. Now there is another couple of really cool functions here that I wanna tell you about. Did you know that this car will prevent you from opening the door if there's another car approaching or if there's a pedestrian or a cyclist. Now the big advantage here is that a lot of cyclists get knocked down from drivers that aren't looking out the car. Kids always wanna jump out of the car as quick as they can. So when they go to open the door, if there is another vehicle approaching, they won't be able to open it. It will just look like it's locked, which is a great feature. In addition to that, the driver has the option of not only locking access to the back of the car from the inside, but also locking access to the windows. So one push of the button at the front there locks the doors and stops the windows from working. So that is some fantastic functionality. And the final feature, some of you may think this is the most stupid feature in the world, but people lead stressful lives. And we've seen countless times in summer across the world, kids end up being locked in the back of cars and dying because their parents forget that they're in there. You don't know what people are going through. So this car has a feature that uses ultrasonic sensors in the back here. If you go to get out of the car and there's still an occupant in there, it's going to remind you to check the back seats. I absolutely love smart technology like that. Hyundai has been clever and I'll show you why in just a second. Obviously with cars like this, this is slightly smaller than a lot of its competitors. So it is marketed more for just kids to access the third row, but will it fit an adult? Only one way to find out. So you can recline the seat by using lever on the side that pulls it forwards, backwards, and also reclines the base as well at the same time. 
But if you do want to climb in there, you have a button on top of the seat that lets you in or lets you out rather if you're in the third row. And then you've got a button here. So you give that one push, it rolls forward and then pushes the entire seat base. It's still going to be hard work to get in. Uh, I think you have to kind of be a gymnast if you're an adult. There we go, I've slid in there. So from the back here, you have a little storage nook on the side, two cup holders on the right hand side, individual air vent controls and a blower control there as well. So you can control the amount of air that you're getting back here. It is disappointing that there's no airbags for the third row. They stop around here somewhere. Can we fit in if I close this though? Let's give this a shot. So Bring that backwards. Yeah, look, I can make it so there is knee room here for me, but you can clearly see that if this is in its standard position, you won't fit. What's the knee room like there? Yeah, so if this is in the position where an adult can fit, you actually don't have any room in the second row. You kind of compromise. So I think this is strictly a kid-only zone. Plus, I've got no headroom either. Let's talk cargo capacity. Because of the reduced overall length, you're going to be compromised here. So it has a power tailgate, which is good news. Here's what I'm talking about. So there's only 130 litres of capacity there with the third row up, and I have a feeling that's gonna mean this doesn't fit. Yeah, that's, that's not going to close. So what you have to do then is drop that third row. Before we do that, I'll show you what's under here. You have the storage for the cargo blind. I'll show you how that goes in as well in just a second. But to drop these, it's fairly straightforward. You pull these tabs, seat folds down into place. That's all pretty easy. And then if you do want to drop these two as well, it's even easier. You just push this button on the side here. That will drop the right-hand side. And then one more drops the left-hand side. That is a really cool setup. Okay, let me show you this cargo blind. It's good that there's a storage spot for it because often this stuff, if you leave it at home or you know, try and not have it in the car, you'll end up losing it or forgetting it somewhere. So it's good that there is a dedicated spot for it. And then you've also got two slots for the cargo blinds. So, if you don't need to have the chairs too far back in the second row, you can slot the cargo blind there. Or if you do need a little bit more space, you simply remove it from its housing and push it forward one stop, and then it extends all the way. So that is a pretty handy setup. And then with our luggage, there is plenty of room for it to fit in here. Look at that. So it is a pretty big boot space, but keep in mind when you do have the third row active, there's barely any room to put anything behind the third row. One of the big benefits here of the Santa Fe and Hyundai's in general in Australia is that the Hyundai Australia team actually does the ride and handling tune exclusively for our market. So these cars are sent to Australia before they're launched. The engineers here get a hold of them and develop their own ride and handling tunes so that it is built for our roads. When I say built for our roads, the roads here in Australia aren't any better or worse than anywhere else in the world, but they're quite unique where you go from having smooth highway roads and then you go to country B roads where you have built up gravel on the side, you have washaways. They're all conditions uh, with gravel as well that you don't really get in other markets around the world. Now, how does the Santa Fe handle? Well, it is a big SUV, but Hyundai has built in as part of that suspension tune a little bit of compliance there. So it is sporty enough to throw it around without it feeling too big behind the wheel. Curiously, Santa Fe comes with a number of drive modes and you select them using this button down here. You've got comfort, eco, sport, and smart. Smart transitions between the modes depending on what your driving is. And if you do bump it up to sport, you get a sharper transmission uh, shift points and you also get slightly heavier assistance on the steering. Under the bonnet of the Santa Fe V6 is a naturally aspirated three and a half litre petrol engine. It produces 202 kilowatts of power and 336 newton metres of torque. And that provides you a combined fuel economy of 10.6 litres per 100 k's. We're seeing closer to 11.6, mainly with city driving. But the good thing about this engine is how punchy it is. You simply just bury the throttle and it gives you a nice little push in the back and away it goes. It gives you a really good surge of torque and it's confidence inspiring, especially if you've got a big overtake lined up. So the only downside to this engine is the flurry of torque that you get. So I've punched it here out of that corner and I can see the traction control light going crazy there. And then we get torque steer. It's the only drama you're gonna have with sending so much torque through the front wheels of what is effectively quite a heavy car. And then that's amplified in the wet. If you're going even on a slight incline and you need to punch the throttle, it'll start becoming skittish and the front end will start wandering a little bit. So it almost feels like it's too much power when it is exclusively front wheel drive. Really would like to see an all wheel drive option here with the petrol V6.
So at 100 kilometres an hour on a country road here, it is a little bit noisy in the cabin. You can hear that wind noise coming over the sides of the car, but in general, the tyres don't really push much into the cabin. So it is serene enough, and then once you crank the stereo, you don't even notice there's any noise from the road. And finally, you've got blind spot monitoring to help you catch other cars in your blind spot, because sometimes that stuff does happen. So Hyundai Santa Fe V6 petrol, I reckon this thing is an absolute winner. It is better than the diesel because it's not as noisy and it has plenty of torque. It's, you know, the diesel is good, but it kind of lacks the punch that you get in this. This gives you the confidence behind the wheel. Where it's let down though, and especially here when it is a little bit wet, is the traction. It has so much torque that it just starts going crazy. And unfortunately, you can't get this with all wheel drive because of packaging. So that is the only disappointment. And that also means that towing can be a little bit sketchy when the weather gets a little inclement. Keep in mind as well, that this is slightly smaller than the likes of CX-9 and like I said, Pathfinder. So that means you're not gonna get as much room in the third row or even as much room behind the third row. So if you do need that extra boot space, you might wanna look elsewhere. But outside of that, this car is sensational value for money, loaded with features and most importantly, fun to drive. SUV shouldn't be boring just because you have lots of kids. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon. That's going to tell you every single time we review a new car. You can read the full review of the Santa Fe V6 petrol at carexpert.com.au. And as always, let us know in the comments whether you're liking these videos, whether you want to see anything changed or whether you've got any questions about the Santa Fe. And until next time, take it easy.